Hey, Sahar Galt here, and I'm going to show you how to build your own recording studio, then how to use it to make great recordings. I think it's the most exciting time to be a musician. There's no more barriers. You don't need a label, a big name studio, you don't even need a lot of money. If you want to produce your own music, you can. And I've put together this series of videos to show you how. We'll start with the basics, then we'll zoom in on the details, and we'll go through setup, tracking, mixing and mastering along the way. Here we go. So a lot of studios center around a digital audio workstation, or DAW for short, which is basically a computer outfitted with some software and an audio interface. For the computer, don't worry about PC versus Mac, it doesn't matter. But you'll probably want a 64-bit platform, a lot of RAM, and a fast processor. You'll also want enough free hard drive space to hold your projects, which can easily be gigabytes in size each. The audio interface is a kind of professional-grade sound card. It'll have better sound and lots of crucial features for audio production a regular computer sound card won't have. You'll want one with multiple inputs that allow you to connect microphones, keyboards, direct-in guitars, as well as outputs for headphones and speakers. In terms of determining which interface you need, well, interfaces are differentiated by the number of inputs and outputs they have. So, for example, if you're recording a band, and especially if you need to mic up a drum kit, you'll need lots of inputs recording simultaneously. Or maybe you do acoustic guitar vocal arrangements, in which case you might only need a couple inputs. Interfaces are also set apart by the quality of the components, a really important one being the preamp, which brings up mic levels, and it can do so cleanly or with some noise. You'll also be coming across specs like bit depth. You're gonna want 24 bit. And sample rate, this is a number you can worry a little bit less about. I should mention before I go on, if you have questions about interfaces or anything else I'm gonna talk about, well, you can just ask me in the comments. Okay, so your interface passes the sound along to your audio software. The software is what you'll use to mix and edit the audio you've recorded. Pro Tools, Cubase, and Reaper are a few of the most popular programs out there, and despite what anyone says, they're equals in terms of sound quality. There are some design and feature differences, but any of those and the myriad of other programs out there can be used to make a great recording. Choose the one that appeals to you the most, makes sense to your brain, and run with it and don't look back. Now that we have the DAW squared away, we need microphones to get some sound into the equation. If you're a singer or plan to record vocals at all, a proper vocal mic is crucial, since vocals are the centerpiece of most productions. If you want a mic that can get you pristine, super detailed vocal tracks, you want a large diaphragm condenser. The Shure KSM42 is a mic I really like. It's extremely transparent, it's very low noise, and it has a gigantic sweet spot. For an all-duty microphone, pick up some Shure SM57s. You're gonna use them somewhere. They're great on snare drums, toms, acoustic guitars, electric guitar cabinets. You can point them at just about anything and get a good result. That brings me to another point. Mics differ in lots of ways from the basic design, dynamic versus condenser, diaphragm size, large or small, polar pattern, cardioid, shotgun, omnidirectional, and so on. And all of this has an impact on what the mic picks up, how it colors the sound, and so forth. And in the next video, we'll talk about which mic to use in which situation. It's also something that you get a feel for the more you record. Hey, that gives me an idea. If you're ahead of the game and already have a specific mic that you love, share what it is and what you use it for in the comments. I'm hoping the comments for these videos will turn into a kind of compendium of our collective knowledge and we can all help each other out. All right, now we need some speakers to play back our recordings so we can hear what's going on. You want what we call monitor speakers which are studio speakers designed to have as flat a frequency response as possible. That way you can get a clear picture of what's going on in your mix without the speakers emphasizing certain frequencies and de-emphasizing other ones. You'll want near field monitors, which as the name might suggest, sit near you. And 
since I'm outlining the most efficient, simplest setup, get powered monitors, because then you don't need to worry about an amplifier. Now, once you have all the gear, hook it up. This is easy. Depending on your audio interface, it'll connect to your computer either via Thunderbolt, Firewire, USB, or PCI. It'll have its own set of drivers for it to work properly on your computer, which you should install according to the manufacturer's directions. Then, make sure your interface is off. And now you want to connect your speakers to the first two outputs of your interface. Most interface outputs tend to be TRS, balanced connections. And most pro audio monitors will have quarter inch TRS or XLR balanced connections as well. And you'll want to use these. Basically, avoid unbalanced connections. Then you'll plug your microphones into the mic inputs. If you have condenser mics like the KSM42, make sure you put them on channels that have phantom power. Phantom power is usually controlled by a switch on your interface that might say 48 volts. Make sure all your condensers have access to phantom power. Dynamic mics like the SM57 don't need phantom power. If you play keyboards or synths, you can plug these directly into the line ends of the interface using instrument cable. Your interface might also have a high Z input, which is made for things like guitars with pickups, electric or acoustic. Now it's time to turn everything on. Always turn your interface on first, then power up your monitor speakers. When powering down, turn off your speakers first, then turn your interface on. Doing things the other way around will make a nasty pop on your monitor speakers, which probably isn't great for them. And guess what? That's it. That's all the gear you need to make a great recording. Now you have it set up, and you're ready to rock. We'll talk about recording technique, mic positioning, levels, room treatment, and generally how to get the most out of your voice and instruments next time. All right, any questions, post in the comments. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of the upcoming videos in the series. And share this video with any musicians that you know. You'll help open the door to a world of music that just wouldn't have existed before. And that's a great thing. Okay, thanks for watching. I'm Sahar Galt. I'll see you next time.